couple of years ago I picked up a four foot cross cut saw a two person saw at a flea market for I think it was ten dollars maintaining a two man saw is a lot of work and there's some skill involved and I'm just learning some of these skills there's uh, three major parts to it you have to well you have to sharpen of course you know you've got your blades here that need to be uh, sharpened you've got rakers that need to be adjusted the rakers remove sawdust from your kerf and then to adjust the size of the kerf your blade has some offset and you have to set that offset by actually moving the blades one away from you and one towards you on the two-handed crosscut saws some of them are in pretty rough shape uh, usually the first course of teeth though are usually pretty good so it kind of gives us an idea of what our factory edge or what we should be aiming for for our angles are so I'm going to try to get a good shot here and if I have to I'll insert some stills this is kind of what we're going for it's a nice spear point uh, it's high here it's lower here and there's a straight line and a nice consistent angle between both sides so we can duplicate that on all the teeth then we've done the first stage of sharpening the saw alright I can sharpen every other blade here um, some people come in from behind and do it but what I prefer to do is um, come in do my blades So I've done, now I'm doing the corresponding face. Okay, so now there's a bit of a burr on that. We have to address that burr. Well, we don't have to address that burr, but addressing that burr makes it a little better. So you can take a honing stone. Some people just use the handle of their files if they have wooden files. And now that's pretty good to the touch. That's pretty sharp. The uh, rakers here on the saw are usually in between a couple courses of teeth and the rakers aren't understood by everybody and that's why some of these saws are in such rough shape the rakers are well basically they rake they get rid of the sawdust out of the cut as these have to be a little bit lower than the cutting blades and if you pick up one of these saws at a flea market and then try to go home and cut with it well it's gonna feel horrible and you're gonna be really tired most of the time and it's because these things are just far too high and most people just picked up a file and then just started duplicating the angle that was already on the blades and they file these things down and never adjusted the raker blades so what we want to do is we want to just check those and what we're going to do is we're going to check that with the straight edge so I've got a metal straight edge and I'm just going to put it down you can buy a jig that will do this and it will do it much better than this but for a twenty dollar saw I didn't want to have to buy a two hundred dollar jig so in this situation here there's actually a little space I'll check this one over here now and that one seems to be touching but not by a whole lot now what I could do is I could that's a lovely sound and then hammer that down flat but since it's only off a little bit I'm going to clean that up a bit
a light pass with the file. I shortened it up considerably. So I have to adjust the rake on this one here. It's just a little bit proud. Um, kind of hard to hold the camera and get a, any real horsepower behind this, but I'm going to try to get it with one file stroke to do both sides. Anyway, I'm going to need a little bit more work, but I'd like to get that knocked down just a little bit. The offset's important. So this blade, of course, will come towards me. This one, out away. And then I'm going to rinse and repeat that process throughout this whole saw. Is it causes the thickness of your cut to be bigger. You don't want it too big or it's more work cutting more wood, basically, and creating more sawdust. But if it's too small, the blade will bind up constantly. And your rakers won't be able to clean the kerf out properly, everything will just get stuck. So it's a fine balance. So the sharpened sides here, I'm going to push that away from me. I'm eyeballing this. So I'm going to go a little bit lower because I'm going to get the whole tooth in the vice grip. And I'm just bending it a little bit. And let's just move this over to a tooth to the blade because that's supported by the block of wood so we don't warp the blade. So this needs to go out away from me. The wood's there and that's supporting the wood, supporting the blade as a whole and a little bit away. And you get a feel for that after a bit. You don't want to be too rugged with it. And then this one needs to come towards me. quite get a good grip on that one. So. so rinse repeat. Um, we've got a whole lot of blades to set the offset on so These two teeth are flush up against this board, and there's just a bit of space for these ones here. This one, I'm just going to pull it just a touch more, though. This is the one that makes a little bit of noise because the bridge here is wore down, so you move it, it tings a little bit. Alright, so very good. Alright. Here we have the straight edge up against these four blades and as I rotate them down as you can see two of the blades are staying tight to the straight edge. Those have been bent out like they to cause offset and the other two are coming back the other way. That's the best way I can actually demonstrate the offset of this. I'll try taking a picture So a chainsaw would be a whole lot easier.